Hello, good morning, afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are, for day three on the Jumpstart Accelerated Program for Administering, Planning, and Deploying Office 365. This is day two of the Planning and Deploying section, which is correlated to the exam 7321. And I have Ajinka Pinto with me again this morning, covering the first four modules of today's six modules. So we're starting this morning with module seven, which is exchange mail routing, so forefront online protection. And this in context of day two is, um, as you can see, or day three of the overall Jumpstart program, is that we cover the first four modules exchange online, very big chunk. And the second half, the second the last two modules is SharePoint Online. Now, I would like to put this a little bit in context of the exam. So when we look at the exam requirements for 7321, we see that yesterday's day we talked about infrastructure planning, ADFS, SSO, unified messaging, about link. That amounts about 20%. Actually, sorry about that, 40% total which is a large portion of the exam, but not the majority of the exam. Today will be the majority of the exam. If you look at Exchange Online, that will be about 41%. 19% is what SharePoint Online amounts to. So as you see, two-thirds two of the day today is Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, one-third of the day, about roughly the same ratio. So today is very important. The majority um, of what we're going to hear today will be on the exam. Um, yesterday, still very important, a lot of details. Now, when you look at the exam, it's basically three different uh, things that we're looking at there. Number one is you have to have the skills, right? meaning you have to understand how to do every single piece. You have to do in order the planning, you have to know how to walk through all those scenarios, and you have to know what's supported and what's not supported. And well, whatever uh, uh, you, you know how to work through all those scenarios and what's supported and what's not supported, you also have to know how to apply those in a real life scenario. So you get a lot of questions on how do I uh, implement email routing, how do I, uh, um, uh, what's supported, what's not supported, but then at the same time you will get scenarios, real life scenarios, where you have to figure out what applies and what doesn't apply. So with that, I would like to hand it over to Ajinka and maybe expand a little bit more on the, uh, on the exam and exam requirements and walk us through the first module, module seven, around uh, forefront under protection, 4P and mail routing. Hey, thanks, Stefan, and sure. good morning to all of you. So Stefan uh, you know, said a very important point here um, about the exam itself. So day one was kind of administering uh, where we're talking about how to manage uh, a already set up environment of Office 365. Uh, when we're talking about uh, the 321 exam, which is deploying Office 365, it's, uh, uh, like Stefan said, it's kind of a mix of three different pieces. Uh, one is the uh, how you actually administer, deploy the, the piece, uh, what's supported, what's not supported. And then you take both of these, uh, kind of make a juice out of it, and use that for planning uh, deployments of Office 365 for different customers. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, what it's all about. Um, major portions, um, we, we understand uh, there were a couple of frustrations yesterday about uh, the, the uh, different topics that we were talking about. Uh, but we want you to understand that uh, those topics um, were important, uh, but from a planning standpoint, uh, they were fairly light as compared to what we're going to do today uh, in terms of Exchange and SharePoint, because those are the major chunks when you look at Office 365 in a real life scenario. That, that's going to be a major planning chunk. Uh, but at the same time, uh, ADFS, DurSync, Link, uh, Exchange UM, these are going to form the base of what you're going to do with these two. So if you don't understand the first, the second is going to be of little use. So having said that, uh, let me go to today's topic. Uh, so first, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Exchange Online and full pay, basically, uh, full-friend online protection for Exchange, which is our anti-spam, anti-virus system. 
and how it plays its role uh, within Office 365? What are the kind of scenarios that uh, you could be up against that you need to plan for or you need to basically apply a particular feature of uh, how it works in, into a scenario? So uh, from there, into session two, we'll jump into more of the migration techniques. We'll start with a staged and cutover migration get a solid handle on that in terms of the scenarios, how to uh, gauge which migration technique should you go for, stage, cutover, or hybrid, and then kind of uh, try to do some practicals. Um, I'll try to show you some demos here. Um, if you've downloaded the content already uh, that Frank's going to uh, have uploaded for you in uh, the panel, then you'd see it's, it's quite an extensive uh, a number of slides that you'd have for these modules. Now, we'll try to cover as much possible in the time that we have. Uh, we'll focus more on the planning pieces uh, because, as suggested always, you need to go out back and do hands-on before you can actually apply for the exam. Uh, that would be the recommended way to go, right? And again, you cannot implement hybrid without ADFS without knowing how to set up DirSync without uh, knowing how to configure a so single sign-on, right? So exactly. Yesterday was basically a foundation and the mm -hmm. base pieces, yep. as you said. And today, the, that's going to be assumptions that you already know, and of we're going to just build from there. All right, so let's start with FullPay. So um, FullPay is a component, basically, that uh, comes with Exchange online. The minute you subscribe for it, it's just there. Um, you, you don't have to do anything additional. Um, it's set up to work with Office 365. You just provision your users which, which, whichever method you choose to in Office 365, and uh, you'd be able to uh, just use the anti-spam antivirus features that are available with FOPE. All right, so FOPE ideally is the first point of contact for email in the cloud. So your MX record is going to be pointing there, emails are going to be writing to it, and from FOPE, they're going to be transitioning over to the Exchange service at the back end. That's, that's the whole piece. Uh, remember, just three things that FOPE provides main, majorly. Uh, the first one is uh, anti-spam, second one, antivirus, and third is you can build custom policies to control mail flow. Now, we'll have a look at that uh, and what we can do with it. So, right. um, in addition to the three, uh, we have edge blocking uh, that's available. Now, this is uh, more based on the global scanning that happens, and uh, there's a list of IPs that get blacklisted, whitelisted. You must have heard a lot of times, hey, you know, my email's not working because my IPs got blacklisted. So that's uh, the edge at our side manages those pieces and would drop emails directly before they even enter our system uh, if, if, they were, if the emails are coming from a, an IP that, are, that is blacklisted. So that's, uh, there's a couple of SKUs uh, details for you on the screen right now in terms of uh, FOPE. Uh, you can purchase FOPE as a standalone if you're not going in for the entire Office 365 suit and run that in parallel with another mailing system that you'd like. Uh, you can you also get it as part of the P plan, uh, P as in Peter, uh, for professional and small business uh, subscriptions. Now, a bit of differences in how you'd be able to manage this or control mail flow. So this is important in terms of understanding or planning which subscription, again, a customer needs to go for. So triggers like, uh, does a customer need to uh, manage full pay, needs to create a lot of custom policies, et cetera. So professional and small business basically does not have admin access or admin center access, which we'll have a look at shortly. So. If, if that's the case, then maybe uh, the P plan is not the best for that customer. You need to relook the scenario and uh, talk to the customer a little bit more as to what they're looking at doing and if that's feasible within that 
a particular plan, even though there's matches in terms of they're below 50 users, et cetera. So that's uh, the professional and small business piece. Uh, you, you can't do uh, a lot of routing techniques. You have to just receive email on Fopay and then uh, into Exchange there. Uh, with the enterprise plans, though, mm -hmm. there's more that you can do. Uh, there's admin center access directly. Uh, you have uh, single sign-on that's supported with the enterprise plan only. You don't have it anyways in the small business plan. Uh, and that also ties back to forefront online protection for exchange. So that's, that's a key point that, that you want to remember again when you're planning for customers. So when we, when we look at the uh, Fopi standalone, that's basically what you use if you have a fully on-premise environment and you choose to have anti-spam uh, and uh, antivirus filtering done in the cloud. That's right. So, so, right. Mm -hmm. so you can uh, purchase this in addition. It's for free included. You cannot get exchange online without Fopi. That's, right? Right. that's included. Mm -hmm. So what would be like a complex scenario that is not supported uh, with the P plan? Sure. So uh, firstly, just to add uh, to um, when you would purchase the Fopay standalone. Mm -hmm. So yes, if you have an on-premise mailing system, totally, you're, you're going to go for Fopay. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also have customers that have uh, Exchange or another mailing system hosted mm -hmm. uh, with their, another hosting provider, right. not Microsoft, mm -hmm. and uh, they're looking for a solid anti-spam, anti-wire solution, and they turn to Fopay. So uh, the mails route through Fopay, and then Fopay sends it out back to that hosted provider. Right. So that, that could be another scenario as well. Absolutely. Um, so going back to the second question, yep. you say in the P Complex. plan, are there any specific scenarios where you know there could be a got to you situation uh, that probably you should not go for the P plan? Uh, well, specifically when we say here, um, use four P connectors for complex scenarios, mm -hmm. right? Those complex scenarios, are we going to explain those later in more depth? Yep. Or do we have something we're going to do? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we hold off for that sure. and get into this later so you get some understanding mm -hmm. how to make a decision on this. Sure. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, it's a couple of uh, pieces with uh, full payer. Uh, let's talk about the architecture in, in a bit. So, uh, like I was saying, three major points uh, that you're going to be in your control is the, uh, or that's going to hit or get affected directly with you is antivirus, uh, the policies and anti-spam pieces uh, within the FOPE structure and uh, the edge blocking scenarios for IP-based blocking is controlled by us. The second piece is called directory-based edge blocking, which I'll explain as, as we go along, uh, which needs to be configured by uh, the end users or the administrator. So uh, basically, your emails lands into uh, Fopay because you're pointing the MX record there. Um, one of the common questions here or, or scenarios that customers face is, I have, like, like Stefan said, I have standalone, I, I'm writing email to uh, on-premises system or to another system. Uh, can I directly route email from uh, the on-premises system and then go to Fopay? So it's, um, it may sound a little weird what, when I'm saying that, but uh, that's, a, that's the majority of customers actually ask that question. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's important for us to help them understand that uh, Fopay needs to be and should be the first point of contact for emails because that's what's going to scan, that's what's going to filter your emails and then pass it back to any mail system, maybe Exchange Online, on-premises, or hosted with another customer or another hosted provider. So that's, that's the guideline that you want to push with customers, help them understand why uh, for security and filtering. That's what FOP is there for. So first hit and then move it uh, to on-premises or the other mailing system. So with IP-based uh, edge blocks, uh, like I was explaining, based on blacklisting, whitelisting, Microsoft is uh, updated about these lists and we just basically drop the emails right before they enter the network itself. So if uh, 
there are a couple of scenarios here where customers after deployment uh, come in for reports as to which emails were dropped. That's more of a service request that needs to be raised with support. So that's just for your information, basically. Uh, from there, you go into directory services, which is uh, more of uh, you have users created in Office 365 and full pay. Uh, and based on the email addresses that, that are there inside, you're going to either accept or drop an email. So you're basically only allowing emails coming in for authentic, authentic users. That, that's the edge blocking. From there, uh, we have virus scanning. Now, there are three solid uh, antivirus uh, products at the back end that Microsoft's tied up with, Kaspersky, Symantec, and Authentium. I, I can't pronounce that that well. So, Authentium. Uh, Pronounce it perfectly. There you go. <laughs> Just confirm that. All right. So these, these are the three that we have, and um, they're going to scan all the emails for viruses, um, remove those viruses for you, or quarantine the email uh, into the spam quarantine or junk mail folder, which we'll have a look at how that piece works in detail. Uh, the second is uh, your policies and uh, that you create, basically. You say, simple example that you could have. Um, and this is a very common requirement, especially when we're doing proof of concepts uh, with customers or just demoing, uh, doing a demo of what Fopay can do. Um, you know, there'll, there'll be a question that, like, I want to restrict all PDFs from going outside my organization, and I want to restrict all, um, say, SSN numbers, for example. And this could be a compliance requirement that a customer has. So they're probably a financial organization or an, an organization that needs to deal with SSN numbers. And I'm taking an example of SSN. This could be credit card details. It could be a lot of other pieces. And uh, they want to catch these emails, either drop them or redirect them to the administrator, kind of for dropping an alert to them saying, uh, you know, if this so and so person tried to send this email, please review and take action. So that's uh, kind of an option where you have for policy uh, creation and enforcement. And uh, there are multiple ways that you can look at it. Two basic ways you can create it by simple text and uh, by using a bit of a scripting piece, which I'll talk about in a bit when we actually get to the console. Uh, last is uh, spam. So when you talk about safe, uh, you're talking about spam engine that's running at the back end, uh, which gets updated from time to time with the new spam signatures. And uh, based on the SCL score, which is the spam score, uh, we'd either drop the email or redirect it to junk, depending on how high the score is or how, how low the score is. So that's uh, the anti-spam piece. Now, um, a common scenario here is, uh, related to the planning piece is uh, either a customer has an existing uh, anti-spam environment and uh, they have what we call as a safe sender list. So they'll, they'll have two sides of this coin, one being can the end user manage the safe sender block sender list, and second is uh, would the administrator be able to manage this? to do two sides of it. And uh, we need to understand the spam engine within Fopay for that a little bit more to be able to talk and help the customer understand and plan for this particular solution. So um, talking about safe sender block sender lists from the user perspective, so that's possible through Outlook, uh, safe senders block senders functionality. Uh, the and end user can manage that, and if you're using Exchange Online, uh, that's directly going to work with Fopay, uh, and that that list will be used as one of the pieces or one of the inputs for the spam prediction. So if you mark, if an end user marks mm -hmm. uh, it as a safe sender, it's basically going to come in, even though it probably would have a high spam rating. Whereas if you have a block sender. That's going 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 to the junk folder or the spam quarantine, uh, even if uh, that email is kind of clean. So that's uh, the whole idea around that. 
The second piece is for administrators. Can administrators manage safe senders, block senders? Uh, can they block particular domains, IPs, or whitelist particular domains and IPs? This is a very, very common scenario that customers have, and uh, we need to help them understand and also plan for this particular solution. Um, be, so yes, that's supported. Uh, you can have filtering lists that you can upload into Forefront Online Protection. And uh, with IP addresses, domain names, it's, you can put them up there. And even you can go to, to the level of specific email addresses that you want to blacklist or whitelist from a particular organization. So you can take all this, uh, plug it in there, and uh, the console's fairly easy to maneuver. So um, uploading these pieces is, is pretty much simple. So that's uh, anti-spam. Um, and uh, the the last piece is your email. Once it goes to these different blocks, it uh, gets delivered into Exchange Online, uh, your mailbox, or like Stefan and I was <coughs> talking about, it uh, goes to your mail system and into your mailbox, wherever that may be, either on premise or in in another hosted provider's environment. So that's uh, Fulpe uh, filtering architecture. You guys have any questions around this? Feel free to put it out in the Q and A, and we have Fulvio, uh, who'll be answering your questions there. Uh, we'll also take try to take some of them live based on how time permits. All right. So, when we took a uh, four P, that's basically three things it does, right? Mm -hmm. Just to recap that, it's taking care of antivirus protection. It's taking care of anti-spam filtering, mm -hmm. and it takes care of custom policies, right? Correct. It implements custom policies. And it's the first point that email should be routed to, mm -hmm. right? Because it's a security layer, like, forgive me the analogy, like a proxy, right? This is where you want to go have the packets go first, email should go first, go to for, through 4P, because it takes care of anti-spam and antivirus filtering. Mm -hmm. It keeps your internal system secure. So this is the main point to route mail, 4P. First. That's right. Are there any other scenarios to route email to? Uh, very much, actually. Um, yeah, in the initial slide, you pointed out uh, the complex connector scenarios, and yep. Fulpe can uh, do a great job in terms of routing emails mm -hmm. across. Uh, besides just you know taking them in and putting them into your mailbox, there, there are multiple ways that you can actually route email. And uh, that's, that's a major piece when you look at, uh, and a very important piece when you look at the planning and deployment sections um, for Office 365, uh, because a lot of the scenarios where, you t where you're trying to make a decision if uh, you should use a cutover migration, a staged migration, or a hybrid migration, and uh, how the customer actually requires you to route email is gonna change based on how you configure FOPE, except for mm -hmm. besides the out of the box that we've talk, talked about right now. Great, great, thanks mm -hmm. for confirming that. Yep, so I'm gonna get to that in just mm -hmm. about a moment. Uh, just wanted to uh, right. let you guys know about the junk mail folder. So, through, again, a scenario when you're looking at uh, customers, uh, they'll have a simple question, or two questions really, and both these requirements are, uh, at two sides of uh, um, two different sides. One is uh, whatever emails are marked as spam, can the administrator manage those and release those based on uh, what the administrator's call is for that spam email? Uh, kind of a central management uh, scenario. And the second is where you're looking at uh, the end users being able to manage their own spam email. So we're not delivering it, delivering it into the inbox, but kind of into a spam quarantine that's required, and uh, where the user can go into and say, okay, this email's good, this email's good, this email's good. Um, don't you know, mark this as safe sender, or just release it into the inbox for now, so I can use it. And uh, from there, the rest of the emails in the spam quarantine can be deleted. So if um, I'd like to ask you guys a question um, or 
Walter, I'd like to ask Stefan a question, put him on the spot like always. The proxy here. <laughs> so, um, have, have you used the junk mail folder in Outlook? Well, I, I use it every single time when I see something popping up in there, right? I uh -huh. go there and I see email, and uh, I mostly delete it because it's properly flagged as junk mail. Yep. So, that's uh, the functionality of Outlook and Exchange uh, tied together, uh, where you have the junk mail folder built into your Outlook box, and uh, these the emails that have a high spam score just get delivered directly to the mail to the junk folder. You don't have to do anything. This is kind of out of the box, all there set for you. Now, this is the functionality that which which I was referring to, where the customer or the end user themselves can manage the spam emails themselves. So they can go into the junk mail folder and uh, they can uh, decide whether that email is genuine or not and, and take an action. So like Stefan said, uh, you know, this, this, I look at junk mail folder whenever I have, hey, there, there's one unread email, there's two unread emails. Right. And most of the time it's uh, a spam, so you just go out, hit a delete and you're clear. At the same time, sometimes I wonder, I get relatively few mm -hmm. junk mails in my junk mail folder. I mean, maybe a handful a week. Mm -hmm. And since we know junk mail accounts do for somewhere between 70 and 90% of mail traffic on the, yep. on the web, most of the junk mail is blocked before it comes to me. Right? And that's, again, based on uh, how it, the junk mail, uh, or the spam uh, number is, is assigned to this junk mail folder. Right? It assesses it and then it dismisses it right away before it actually lands in my junk mail folder for the most part. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the edge blocking. The uh, edge blocking. You're referring yeah. to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's great. So that's uh, how the junk mail folder kind of looks like uh, in your mailbox. And uh, I also have the block sender uh, and never block sender, which is the whitelisting piece in that you can do through Outlook. So this is a user control, user level control that you can do. Uh, so uh, when when you're planning for um, the system, this this is some of the common scenarios you're going to hit against uh, when it comes to forfeit online protection. Um, can we do? Uh, can we have user control or administrative centralized control? These this is where it's going to toggle for a lot of the feature sets that, that are provided. And it's important to understand what can be done, what cannot be done, what's there out of the box like we explained, and what you can uh, customize or configure in Fopay and have it do. All right, so that's junk, mail. All right, and uh, this is a screen of the quarantine itself. So. This is uh, more the centralized administrative method uh, that you can use. Now, the administrator does not have a central location that they can come to and see all the spam emails. Uh, mm -hmm. But what they can do is they can access uh, users' junk mail folders, and they can help manage email if required. Not the suggested way, but they can do that if required. Uh, but the ideal way is to not modify, the recommended way is to not modify uh, the setting in Fopay, which directly routes email to the junk mail folder for the end user to manage. Okay. So, like you see, by default, uh, we write emails to junk mail uh, in Outlook, and you can configure block and safe sender lists and uh, you have uh, spam quarantine notifications if you're going to the quarantine site. And this brings me to another scenario. Um, this is a, a place where you want, uh, again, users to be able to manage their email, uh, but you don't want to deliver the email to the spam box. So, yeah, like Stefan was saying, uh, the filtering is good enough uh, for him not to receive a lot of emails, and uh, probably he does not even necessarily need to go to junk mail folder. So a lot of customers have a requirement where we're talking about, uh, I need a report, a summary, uh, saying, uh, going out to the user directly saying, okay, I have uh, 
five emails in a spam quarantine, what do you want to do with them? Do you want to delete them? Do you want to send to inbox? Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the little spam quarantine notification that we have that by default uh, can run every three days and send a notification to the end user. They'll have uh, kind of a hyperlink in that, which when they click, they'll land up with the junk mail, uh, I'm sorry, the Forefront Online Protection Quarantine mailbox, and they'd be able to manage the email from there. So different scenarios, uh, different pieces. Again, you have questions on these scenarios. Uh, you have your experiences that you want to share. Feel free to go out and put it in the Q&A, and we'll be happy to have a discussion on that. All right, uh, from there, uh, let's go into mail flow and routing. Now, we've talked about the general forefront online protection for Exchange support, uh, what's there, what's there out of the box, and what you can do with it. Now, the next piece is when you get into more complex scenarios with, uh, comp with different customers. Um, mostly, it's a hybrid scenario that you're talking about. There's a coexistence with another mailing system and uh, you're looking at the mail flow and routing. So, but while I say that's mostly, not necessarily always, right? So, uh, within Forefront Online Protection for Exchange, we introduced three uh, routing techniques or uh, connectors, basically, that help you route emails in, in different methods. So, the first piece to understand is how routing is happening, what is the security portions in it. So, um, again, a compliance requirement with uh, a lot of the customers, uh, they'll have, uh, say for example, a financial organization, and probably Stefan can uh, talk to it quite a bit, because that's, that's uh, the kind of interactions that he has. So, you have <coughs> right a financial organization, and uh, their mandatory requirements, compliance requirements, are they need to keep uh, all information or data secure. So maybe sending yep. an email to another financial organization or their customers, or maybe holding the data within their prem prem premise. So yep. holding it on premises or expanding it beyond not just necessarily the financial sector. Mm -hmm. um, there are country regulations. Data cannot use the country boundaries mm -hmm. or a certain state in a, in, a, uh, in a particular country. So it, it varies a lot. And then, of course, if you bring in pharma, all the regulatory issues that, mm -hmm. that come with that is where do, you, where do you share information, how long do you keep the information, and where. So there's a lot of uh, mail routing specific issues that, that come up. Yeah. Um, and certainly the, the different scenarios and uh, connectors help mitigate all of those issues. Yep. So that's, that's very true, right? So different, uh, not, not just financial, <laughs> do it yep. just an example, but yep, there, there's uh, a lot of different types of customers, a lot of verticals that require different uh, uh, kind of mail routing and security to be inbuilt into their mail system, uh, not because they choose to, but because they have to. So, <laughs> yep. so that's, that's where FOPE kind of ties in, helps you do those pieces. So by default, Forefront Online Protection for Exchange tries to deliver email over TLS, that's Transport Layer of Security, so it's more of a network uh, level security. And that what we call that is opportunistic TLS, all right? That's by default. So what it's going to do is it's going to try to establish a TLS connection first with the recipient uh, email system. If the recipient email system does not support uh, TLS, then it's going to fall back on SMTP and just basically deliver the email. So that's, that's by default, so, but that's, that may also mean that uh, some organizations may not uh, meet their compliance requirements because uh, you can't really tell when you're sending an email over TLS, when, when you're sending an email over basic SMTP, uh, because uh, you, you, you're sending probably 1,000 emails a day to 500 different people and mm -hmm. with 500 different email systems. And there's, there's no report that you can actually draw to understand what happened. So uh, what you're doing here, and uh, the best scenario that I can uh, help with is more of a business-to-business -business, 
uh, situation or business to customer situation even. Um, again, you know, I'll fall back on the financial sector. Ba I'll take an example of bank, and this is something that uh, comes to us very recurring, right? So you have a financial organization. Uh, they need to route email between them, their vendors, other banks, and they have to mandatorily have uh, a secure connection, minimum a secure connection. The next level would be to actually encrypt the email that you're sending uh, in terms of uh, the content itself, uh, not just the network security, but they need to start with network security. So that's where you can set up forced TLS, where you're making sure that between your uh, forefront online protection system and the recipient organization, by default, both support TLS, and you're going to configure all emails going back and forth between these two domains to work with TLS only. There's, there's no opportunistic or uh, fallback to SMTP in that particular scenario. Now, um, this requires you to know who you're going to send the email to beforehand so you can set it up or deploy full for online protection to uh, send and receive email over TLS only. So again, a lot of planning involved here. You need to uh, be connected with your customers thoroughly to understand if they have this sort of a requirement and align the TLS uh, configuration pieces to them. All right. So another piece is uh, where you're looking at uh, um, your inbound and outbound email. So forefront online protection for Exchange um, recommended to have your inbound and outbound emails going through it. So uh, this is a scenario basically when you have full page standalone and you're running um, a mail system on premise, or it's it with another hosted provider. So you want to route your emails in and out from Forefront Online Protection because a lot of customers miss out. Mm -hmm. um, they route, the, by default, you need to route your incoming email to Forefront. That's a given. Mm -hmm. But they miss out on routing their emails back out of Forefront Online. So how is that going to help uh, the customer in, in that particular scenario? Is uh, One, it will help them ensure that they are not creating spam and sending it out to the to the world. Uh, it helps them to not to safeguard their IP uh, and uh, their domain name from getting blacklisted. Because what's going to happen is uh, their mailing system will send the email out to Forefront Online Protection. Forefront Online Protection will check that email for spam, viruses, even when it's being sent out. So. It's ensuring mm -hmm. that the customer is uh, secure in uh, coming in and going out for email. Okay, and uh, the third piece we've kind of talked about this, but I'll just quickly touch through it. Uh, you can you have a particular uh, partner or customer? We talked about TLS being set up. Uh, for uh, that particular vendor or uh, the other business that you need to interact with by default. Now, if you trust that organization sufficiently, you can actually bypass the spam filters for that particular uh, provider. So you're kind of routing email or creating a connector like you would in Exchange to receive email directly or building a point-to-point -point connector to receive email directly within the system itself. So that's one of the scenarios. All right, so basic architecture. Again, I'm going to leave this uh, for uh, your reference. We've talked about each of these points uh, already, but just, just for your understanding. Again, if you have any questions around these, feel free to post out in Q&A. Um, we'll be happy to take it up. All right. So some of the scenarios or the base four scenarios that you're going to be looking at at any point in time when it comes to routing email in forefront online protection for exchange. Uh, the first one's fairly simple. We've uh, kind of talked about it when we talked about the forefront online protection architecture itself. 
uh, where we're talking about fully hosted mail flow, which we're saying um, basically the customer is going to be subscribed in for exchange online, and uh, they're going to have mail flowing in from the internet into faux pay. Uh, there's going to be the scanners, everything, and then email gets delivered to exchange online. Simple. Uh, there's basically a little that you need to do here and uh, your mail is good. Now what uh, you want to consider here is the little TLS pieces and other pieces in addition to uh, this out-of-the-box setup that's going to that's going to be there. The only piece you need to configure here is the MX record point to forefront online protection. Alright, so you have your emails inbound, outbound. I'm just going to click through so we can get to the next slide. Some great animation there on your screens. I hope you're loving it. All right. Uh, so the second piece is when we're talking about the smart host scenario, uh, where you have inbound email again coming through a uh, forefront online protection for Exchange, but your outbound email is uh, not going through forefront online protection uh, directly to the internet, but you have uh, kind of a second hop that you need to go through and from that second hop you'd be delivering email to the internet. Now a couple of uh, pieces here. Uh, Microsoft does provide encryption uh, for emails through forefront mm -hmm. online protection for exchange so that's one of the pieces that you can use but you'll have a lot of customers that already have invested in an encryption device uh, or a, a on third-party encryption service in the cloud probably and they need to route their outbound emails through that device so that they're ensuring the required emails are encrypted and sent out so they are in compliance. Right? So you're just doing outbound email routing there. Uh, again this scenario is where your emails are in the cloud. You're using FullPay and Exchange Online together. So you'd use FullPay to route emails to the outbound connector. If you're on-premise, that changes the scenario. FullPay does not not necessarily come into the picture for outbound email. So you're basically routing it to the uh, DLP device or the encryption device directly. Right, so. so does the same apply for um, DLP in this case, data loss protect, uh, prevention? Because that's another very important topic, and we see it the second time here. So mm -hmm. we have uh, encryption is one aspect, and the other aspect is data loss prevention. Um, and that's, again, going back to highly regulated industries or mm -hmm. certain country requirements. Uh, but we can basically assume that's the same, uh, same scenario here for, for DLPs, right? Exactly, yep. exactly. So uh, the whole concept about this is you're able to route email to another hop before you reach yep. the internet. So that, that's very much possible, yeah. Good. All right, let's go on to the next scenario. So inbound safe listing scenario. So you have uh, uh, what I was talking about earlier is the trusted partner that you have. So uh, say Stefan and myself uh, run two organizations. Yeah, that would be nice, right? Sure. So Microsoft one, Microsoft two. <laughs> Number one, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so we have two organizations, and uh, we know that we never create spam email. We're good. And we can have a trust between each other in terms of understanding, of course, uh, that whatever emails mm -hmm. Stefan is going to send to me um, is going to be genuine. So I, I can trust that his systems are great, and you know I, I can just accept the emails without much uh, thought. So what I can do there is create a dedicated connector with Stefan because he probably sends me about or my organization about thousand emails. If he were to do that to me, that would be crazy. So uh, he sends my organization about thousand emails a day, and I can create this inbound connector in Forefront Online Protection for Exchange, which directly allows him to send email, ensuring that um, none of his emails are getting drop blocked, because it's very, very super critical for me to receive all his emails, no matter what. Right? Else, my business is going to suffer, and so is his. So, right, so that's uh, the inbound safe listing scenario. All 
right? Uh, the last one is about uh, routing emails to the cloud and uh, routing emails to on-premises system at, from there. So kind of a different scenarios here, uh, that we can bring out for this, uh, where you have a shared namespace, basically. So I do have this. OK. So when you have a shared namespace, meaning you have uh, a on-premises exchange server or a second mail uh, system, and you have Exchange Online, and you have some users on one, both of these systems, and that means you're going to need to route emails across these systems as well. So uh, your third-party mail system or your exchange system on-premise and your exchange online system probably has uh, a domain as at Microsoft.com, for example, and uh, some users here and there. So what, what you're going to look at doing there is uh, creating a connector to the third mailing system and for inbound and outbound mail flow. Uh, what you can do is ha scan emails in forefront online protection for exchange. So your MX record's pointing there. From there, emails get scanned and get delivered to the on-premise system. And then the on-premise system, based on uh, if the user's not there, it'll route that email back into the Exchange Online system, feed that email back into the Exchange Online system, and it would get delivered into the cloud. Now, this probably seems a little complicated in terms of a scenario. Uh, this is mostly used during hybrid deployments where you have a coexistence and uh, you need to route emails. Now, the reason for doing this is um, Exchange uh, on-premise uh, would have the details to reroute emails to Exchange Online, while Exchange Online would, would not be able to do that. And we'll have a look at the hybrid uh, scenario for Exchange uh, Online deployment, and more of this will get cleared there. So for now, to understand, on-premise, we have uh, kind of a alias address for the on online email uh, online users mailboxes and it would use that to reroute emails back into the exchange online system and Fopi would understand that and route emails or drop emails to their mailbox directly right so that's your mail flow coming into the Fopi system again some cool animations on your screen and uh, it goes on premise into the inbound exchange receive connector. Now you're going to have to configure that on the exchange system as well, uh, not just the FOPE system. And uh, from the exchange system, it goes to check if it's in if there's a mailbox there. If not, it routes it back to FOPE. From FOPE, it gets delivered to the exchange online mailbox. All right. And. Uh, there was this uh, question about uh, direct resynchronization a lot yesterday to have rewrite. Now, uh, the address rewrite functionality is going to be very, very important uh, from their sync in a hybrid scenario, which enables you to do what I'm just showing. So email comes in, uh, gets routed to your on-premise system. It goes to the mailbox if it's there else it'll get sent out to full pay. Now, this is not the best routing situation uh, that you want to have because your emails are going to get scanned after uh, they're delivered to your on-premise system. But you'd have customers that want uh, this kind of a routing system because probably uh, they have two scenarios. One. Uh, they have a box on premise that requires them to either archive emails uh, in terms of everything that they receive. They just need to archive it for compliance reasons. And uh, so what you're doing is writing emails from the internet into that box, letting it uh, get archived, then going to the on-premises exchange server, and the on-premises exchange server connector is writing emails into full pay then you have the scan 
and emails get delivered accordingly. So that's uh, a couple of scenarios there and uh, how you want to look at it what, it, what are the function sets that you want to map into it. Now, I have a screen basically on uh, shared right now. It's the Fope uh, online console and talks about the connectors that you can uh, configure. Now, a great resource to uh, walk you through step by step. I have a couple of screenshots here, but what you want to look at is the administrator guide or the user guide for Fullfront Online Protection for Exchange. It's available as a free download uh, from uh, the Microsoft website, or you can also download it from the information section once you log in into this console. All right, so it's fairly simple. All you need is uh, a name to the connector. You're looking at uh, putting in the domain name, the IP, uh, source or destination based on what you're looking for, and simply select the options, maybe force TLS or TLS with certificates, uh, full certificates assigned, and you simply save that connector, and it's going to start writing emails for you. Now. Same with the outbound FOPE connector. Now, just a disclaimer there to you guys in terms of planning uh, when you're deploying this, right? So don't rush into this and say, you know, I'm going to configure this uh, at 7 a.m. and I'm going to expect at 7.5, once I've finished configuring this connector, mails are just going to start routing. It's going to take a little bit more than that. Um, the idle time is... Uh, about four hours before these connectors can become fully functional. Now, does this mean that you're going to lose email? Probably not, but you want to time that accordingly uh, and do switches between systems uh, in a planned manner so you're not running into surprises. All right, and if you go to the connectors and click on them, you have kind of a... Um, Se section where you can edit that, but if you want to look at what's happening with the re with that connector, if you go into the report section in Forefront Online Protection, you can get a summary of uh, what the connector is, how, how active is it, and uh, basically check if there are any other filters that are getting applied to that connector active at that point in time. All right, uh, there's a couple of resources on uh, your screen at the moment that you can use. I have the admin center link, uh, the reports link, quarantines link, all of that on your screens. Uh, there's also the forefront online protection uh, document that I was talking about that you need to, need to download. And uh, I have a bit of an appendix after that you'd see in your, your content that walks you through administering a full front online protection from Office 365 and also doing the connector space and di other different pieces like reporting, auditing, etc. So these are step-by-step processes uh, that are there. But again, uh, nothing like the administrative, cons uh, administrative guide or the user guide to walk through this entire piece. All right, and uh, that brings us to an end for the forefront online protection mail and routing uh, session for today. So that's module seven. Thank you, Ajinka. Mm -hmm. And that fits in with the planning for um, messaging hygiene, security, and compliance. That, in combination with the module 10 after lunch break today, exchange online archiving, will be a part of that uh, certification exam. So very important to understand that, understand those concepts, being able to apply those. Thank you so much. And uh, we will be back after a 10-minute break with the next module. And it will be two parts, um, two modules for exchange online hybrid scenarios. All right. So you guys take a quick breather, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.